New York City Department of Education was hit with a record number of complaints about misbehaving teachers. Right. Mm. And so, I mean, I'd be interested to know, like, how many of these complaints ended up being legitimate Mm -hmm. complaints? You know, what was the level of, um, you know, misbehaving, like how egregious and, you know, if it any correlation to this larger, like parental movement where kind of parents and teachers are being pitted against one another. But again, this is New York city. It's a so much, um, it's so blue, right? Like basically everybody's a Democrat, uh, high poverty rates. So I don't know if those dynamics are necessarily the same in New York City as they are in, say, some of these suburbs. Not that they're totally devoid of them, though, because there's definitely a strong parental movement in New York City as well. Mercedes Luriano uh, allegedly used her school email to solicit threesomes. That's that's, uh, that's, a... Wow. Doesn't seem like it's high school well, appropriate. Co- well, complaint. it doesn't, but who was looking at the email? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of, the on her email? Probably, one of the students probably shared it. You know, where it gets out. Complaints about misbehaving New York City Department of Education teachers and work and workers skyrocketed to a record 9,813, up 60 percent from 2021, wow. which I don't know, might also just be kind of a shock value because, it, you know, this was a covid year. So we weren't in school that much. Um, but but still, I'd be interested what the what the historical rate is, not just from that one year. But um, the the special commissioner of investigation troubling tally eclipsed the record set in 2019 of 9,638. Okay, so that's a little bit more context. There we go. And this would have been um, not a COVID year. So um, again, I think the 60 percent is shock value because in 2021 there wouldn't have been a lot of complaints given the hybrid school schedule where like most of the kids right. go to school um right. but you can see that and also that first lead up. story is kind of an odd choice for an example it's like okay so the emails like you know what a kid was looking at her emails and not kids aren't supposed to be looking at her email so you know, like you doing something inappropriate over the network is different than like an inappropriate. Okay, I see what you children. I see what you mean. It's not like she was soliciting children. Okay, or that, presenting something to them. Like, how did right. who saw the email is important. Like, if a kid was looking at her email and this got out, okay, well, you're not supposed to be looking at your teacher's email. What are you right. Doing? Well, let's see. Let's see if email. they talk a little bit more about it. Ready? Um, let's see. It says investigators concluded last year at least 263 school employees broke criminal law or administrative Ouch. rules, including 40 cases involving inappropriate or sexual misconduct, according to the agency's 2022 annual report. Yet only 17 SCI cases were referred to prosecutors, and only four of those cases made it to court. Okay. We're deeply well, concerned by the cases. lack. Yeah, we're deeply concerned by the lack of follow through and accountability regarding cases of sexual misconduct in New York City schools. Emily Miles, Uh-oh. executive director of New York Alliance Against Sexual Assault, told the Post. All survivors, no matter their age, deserve systems that take them and their experiences seriously and work to keep them and their peers safe from future harm. Criminal cases often fall apart because an alleged victim stops cooperating with an investigation or parents forbid police to interview their child. All right, so there's this person, and it says Paul Narducci allegedly groomed a Brooklyn Academy of Science and Environment student beginning when she was a freshman. He looks creepy. Uh, One of the most egregious allegations came from a 22-year-old after-school worker, Eber Poma II, who was arrested for gang raping a 12-year-old girl on June 20, 2022. The criminal complaint alleges Poma raped a 12-year-old student on three consecutive days near PS 108 in Morris Park beginning on June 11, 2022. The SCI did not release any details about Poma, including what company he worked for, the access he had to children, and any of the circumstances surrounding the alleged sexual assault. Other cases included a Brooklyn Academy of Science, an environment teacher accused of a brazen pattern of grooming a female student when she was a freshman before repeatedly sexually assaulting her, according to an SEI investigation. 
The Crown Heights science teacher, 32-year-old Paul Narducci, even moved across the street from the alleged victim who came forward after graduating from the school and is now 21 years old. Oh Narducci resigned a month before SEI closed its investigation in December 2022 and recommended his firing. The alleged victim eventually stopped cooperating with authorities despite investigators substantiating her claims. Charges were never filed and Narducci still holds a state teaching license. This is Natalie Black, and she allegedly sent at least 15 pictures of herself to 17-year-old student at Hillside Arts and Letters Academy. Wow. Uh, that's how she looks in that picture. Um, so, uh, okay, so I guess this is, oh, let's see. She said investigators claimed the report to the um, that Black also sent pictures of her the JJ to students and even pulled her pants down in a student's home, telling him to eat my ASS. Wow. <laughs> okay. But no charges were ever filed against Black. She was removed from DOE services. Wow. Yehia Jonas, a 78-year-old former PS771 Brighton Beach, is accused of masturbating on camera during a Skype tutoring session with a 12-year-old girl in July 2020. Yummy. Mercedes, okay, that's the one. Okay, so this is your 56-year-old former English teacher. She she did not look 56 in that picture. Over the top. That, that was that first one, right? I don't um, know if she's doing well for her. What they say, black don't crack. Yeah, right, it's true. <laughs> apparently, apparently they are... She put a sledgehammer to it, like a friend of mine used to say. <laughs> Let's see. So she uh, and she used her email address to solicit three three sums in exchange for racy photos between 2016 and 2017. Although the emails didn't come alight to light until 2021, it's she is now a reading teacher in Marriott, Georgia. Okay, so that's interesting. I wonder what this links to. Oh, they have like a whole article like on her specifically. Oh, hello. I wonder how they like found them. Let's see. So she would say, hello, my name is Mercedes, aka Mercy. Here are some photos of me. Hope to hear from you soon. And let's see. So it says in... The email started around the time Patricia Katina took over as interim acting principal of the school. So she was principal of the school. <laughs> In February 2019, Liriano wow. claimed that Katania told her that she wasn't allowed to teach black history. Katania contended that she merely told the teacher she needed to have an adequate lesson plan, legal papers said. Mrs. Liriano immediately went on a loud tirade through the hallways in the main office of the school, screaming words to the effect that I could tell her she could not teach black history. Cantina wrote in a deposition submitted as part of the dueling legal claim over the matter. So can, so Katania said she became the victim of a smear campaign. Liriano's lewd emails came to light in 2021 as a part of discovery of the lawsuits. Ah! <laughs> oh, your sins will always come to light. So for this other issue that was totally unrelated, they did FOIAs on their emails and they found this. You know, our schools are, you know, a reflection of where we are in our society and it's not to say, of course, children will find themselves in vulnerable situations in many places, including in their own homes. Yeah. And I do think that even in the state the schools are in, they are the lesser of two evils than being closed. I think things were way worse when kids were stuck at home than having access to schools, even in the state that they are in. Right. We have to be in school in order to like reform our schools, to fix our schools, to be able to move forward in whatever capacity. Uh, yeah. But I am concerned about what's going on in the schools and the people who are working with our kids. And, you know, there are local public schools, but do you really have a relationship with those people or those people yeah, you really know, in your community? Do you have the same um, goals? Do you have yeah. the same interests? I mean, just Thanks for checking out this clip of Teaching Liberty Live. Help us beat the algorithm 
by sharing it on your social media platforms and with your friends. Also hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, tap that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Plus I go live every Saturday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, breaking down the big headlines and trending topics of the week. And let's make sure we stay directly connected. So head over to teachingliberty.org and sign up for my mailing list. Now, go watch more of my videos and share them with your friends. Did I mention that? Come on.